Ladies and gentlemen, we're live, 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 live once again. I want to talk about popularism versus truth. And I'm going to speak about a number of different fights. First of all, Katie Taylor versus Rose Valente. Valente was getting beat, but Valente was landing some body shots. The fight ended because of a headbutt. It was ruled a, a, a stoppage or a TKO off a headbutt. Now, a lot of people would say, well, you know, Katie Taylor was beating Rose Valente. She was going to lose anyway. That's a populist attitude. And how we know that is because when we look at the fight, Gabe Rosado versus um, Masiej Solenki. Solenki was out boxing. Gabe Rosado knocked him down, I think, in the very first round. Knocked him down again in the 11th. But all the time, Gabe was using a very effective shot, the overhand right. He was able to land that shot on occasion against Solenki. And Gabe got up from the knockdown, survived, and then started fighting back and dropped Solenki twice. And then it was really putting the heat on him in the 12th round. Solenki went on to win the fight because he had more rounds in the bag. My point being that we've seen this time and time again in history. Chavez getting his ass beat by, uh, 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 I forgot what the Philly fighter's name is, right? comes back to stop the dude with two seconds to go in the round. Um, Mildred Taylor. How can we forget? Uh, uh, I forgot what the guy's name is from, from TMT. He's another, he's not, he's Mickey, 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 not Mickey Ward. Mickey something. It'll come to me. But he, he got stopped by uh, by uh, John Molina in the final seconds of the last round. I think it was a 10-rounder. John Molina knocked his ass out. What I'm saying is a lot of people are saying, oh, Mikey got beaten up and stuff. And that. Okay, whatever. You got bragging rights, whatever. But Mikey went in with that kind of hope. He went into the final round against Errol Spence thinking, okay, I got I to gotta get this guy out of there. And he went to work. When, when, you, when you think like that, that is why you can get your ass beat all the way up almost to the bell, and you can stop a guy. And that's how you have to think. Now he knew he had, just had to punch his chance against Errol Spence, and he had to figure out a way to get him out of there. And he was willing to go to 12 rounds to do so. I think of several other fights where something like that happened. Right. And it's that that I find interesting. Popularists would say, oh, Mikey was getting his ass beat and stuff like that, which, to be honest, he was our box thoroughly. But in terms of he was good enough to be able, you know, healthy enough and stuff to be able to still press the action. I was thinking of Jesus Chavez versus Floyd Mayweather. But Jesus Chavez was actually taking punishment in that fight and going, and they stopped the fight. But the point is, he was pressing the action. And at a certain point in the fight, the round before uh, Ronnie Shields stopped the fight, he was handing Floyd Mayweather some trouble on the ropes. He was giving him some trouble, landing some good shots. And that was the same round when Mayweather landed a nasty left hook that sent uh, Chavez across the ring. My point being this, that there's a popular sentiment. It is something you must learn in boxing is, even if life is beating you over the head, don't give up and keep moving, keep pressing. So you never know, you might win, you may have the victory. And in that fight, in my opinion, it showcased that. I'm not saying that Mikey Garcia was getting physically beat up because that wasn't the case, but he definitely was strategically getting beaten up. Errol Spence was definitely outboxing his ass. The jab being the big difference. I was listening to, again, his coach and, and even Errol Spence talk about how a jab could offset what uh, Mikey Garcia was doing. He had a nice sharp jab. He had a good jab. But I'm not going to say that uh, Mikey Garcia didn't get around that jab eventually, and he did. Um, but it was very late in the fight. 
I remember Marcus McDonough had an excellent jab himself. Sean Porter has an excellent jab. And uh, Oscar De La Hoya has an excellent jab. Floyd was able to navigate around those jabs um, and get to his opponent. Canelo fought a lot of really, really sharp, good jabbers. He was able to get around that jab and do what he needed to do. So I could see Mikey realizing he had to do the same in this fight. The problem was he was trying to box Spence from the outside at first. And then when he's trying to get to the inside, he was saying Errol Spence was taking the steps back. But he didn't press it. You have to press the guy. So you have to keep on pressing him. And I think Mikey realized late on in the fight that he had to press Errol Spence, intelligently press him, but he had to press him. Not like Lamont Peterson pressed him. You got to vary it up, change it up, still be dogging him, still keep coming at him, cutting off those angles to get, get at him. And I think Mikey didn't press it enough to get on the inside of Spence like that. Um, and then he realized he needed to do that. But then again, if I were Mikey, I would have done the same thing, being cautious for, for some of the fight because Spence is very good on the inside. This is not the same like another fighter who's not good on the inside. He's good on the inside. But that's what Mikey needed to do, press the action a little bit more to get to the inside. When he started to do that because he knew he was losing the fight and he really started taking up the action, yeah, he got caught with a good body shot in the 11th, but – he kept on pressing the action. You could always you could always rely on your defense to shell up and then go. So I think that was that was the one thing I, I thought Mikey would have done a little bit better. Spence always come back with an answer though. He would always try to press the action back at, at Mikey because that's what Spence do. So he pressed the action back at Mikey. Mikey would have to shell up, use his defense to get past it, and then he he he'd come back at Spence. So it was like a kind of ebb and flow in that respect. But he really should have pressed the action on Spence a little bit more. Spence would have come back with something, of course. But that's what he needed to do. Um, so, because he was he was doing it technically from a technical standpoint, he was trying to do, and he kept on falling short with even his jabs. Even when he changed up the angle on Spence, Spence had the pivot work. Yeah, he would be ahead of Spence on the pivot work, throwing the jab, but he he circled. He would circle. He would he would pivot in such a manner that he's still out of range. Where he could have hit Spence, he still was out of range after the pivot work. So he throw three or four jabs. I noticed when he started to pivot on the outside of Spence and catch him with a jab, Spence would again dip down low and then swivel or pivot. He would pivot his whole body to face Mikey again. So, you know, I told you Spence is really good with the pivot work, and that that, that always makes a difference. Um, so I, I'm thinking about Terrence Crawford versus Errol Spence. I'm thinking of how Terrence Crawford fights. He's also a very intelligent fighter. And... Um, Terrence will have some some more reach, has some more reach. Thinking about it, of course that would be a good fight. Of course that would be a 50-50 fight. But um, if Spence can, if he can, uh, uh, Thinking about Terrence. Terrence has a certain rhythm to his fighting. Errol Spence ain't got no rhythm, really. So I think this is where this is where Spence can beat beat Terrence Crawford. Ter Spence can beat Terrence Crawford because Spence is solid. Terrence is good, but he's a little sloppy. He ambidextrous though. He's a little sloppy with how he he does things. He's not as sharp as Spence. So what Spence can do. Because Spence don't necessarily telegraph stuff, Terrence Crawford kind of do the little, little Bobby thing like this. Spence pretty good with the timing as well. The only problem I don't like with Spence is when he's coming in with his attack, he can get counter punch. He get check hook and stuff like that. I can see Terrence Crawford check hooking him. And Mikey tried to go Spence into him so he could counter punch him. But he had to wait for the assault to finish. Because Mikey, not that. He, he, he's a welterweight, but he had to be careful. He had to be careful how he managed that power. Because he not, he's not full fledged welterweight. He just jumped up into the division. You know. I like to see Mikey at welterweight again. I like to see him at welterweight. I think this experience where he lost that fight will give him. And give him some more thought so he could think about how he, he would 
add to his arsenal and maybe not be so vocal about what he what his approach is against Errol Spence or anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Well, folks, I just want to talk about popularism versus um, the truth. I think um, I think there's a lot of, uh, of course, I just want to say, I might even toot my own horn, that I, I believed many a time that uh, that people were counting out Arrow who was supporting Mikey, and people who were supporting Arrow were counting out Mikey. And now the people who have Arrow won, win, they're still trying to count out Mikey and kind of denigrate him, which is stupid. Some of them because of racism, that they're, they're doing that. Other people is because they had unrealistic expectations for Mikey. Now, I, I personally said this was going to be a um, a competitive fight. Um, it was not as competitive as I thought it would be. There were times when there was clashes and stuff and spurts and stuff and mini battles, which sometimes Mikey won, but on lesser occasion than Spence won. But having said that, I want to say that the popularist sentiment that you see is usually one that's erroneous, especially when it comes to boxing. So people are saying now the popularist opinion is Spence wrecked Garcia. Okay, he wrecked Garcia. Okay, we'll see in the next fight. We'll see in the next fight if Garcia is really wrecked. Right? We'll see. Now, if he comes back and he does fantastically well, you know what's wrecked when somebody's career is wrecked? It will show in their fight afterwards. Their next fight, it should show. Right? That reckless language about um, Spence wrecking Garcia is, 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 is humorous, to say the least. All right? Garcia's gotten worse punishment in some other fights where he had a busted nose that was bleeding and a busted eye. People forget this stuff. All right? Garcia fought through with those things. All right? Spence didn't break his nose, didn't bust his nose, didn't. He got a little bruise on his eye somewhere around the first or second round. Other than that, and a couple little bumps on his head, little red marks on his head, Mikey ain't, Mikey ain't go through nothing. All right? And, you know, Roberto Duran, he had fights before he faced Sugar Ray Leonard for the championship. So he had welterweight fights. Um, Robert, um, Robert Guerrero had... Uh, welterweight fights. Marcus Maidana had welterweight fights before he stepped up from super lightweight. Um, Shane Mosley had welterweight fights before he faced Oscar De La Hoya. All right. My point being, Mikey has done something pretty rare where he just jumped up from lightweight to face a welterweight. All right. So you got to give Mikey his kudos. Now, you cannot take away anything from Errol Spence, like I said, because he fought this dude. He was like, oh, Errol, he, he faced a lightweight. You couldn't get him out of there or some shit like that. No, no, this is not this is not an ordinary lightweight he faced, which is why Errol Spence deserves that pound for pound. If you're going to do that to Errol Spence, then you're going to do it to Marvin Hagler because he faced Roberto Duran, who was he came up from super welterweight, I think it was, to face him. And you have to do it to... Uh, you have to do it to, because um, um, you know everybody would say that um, Hagler faced smaller guys all the time. You have to do that to Gennady Golovkin because he he facing all these smaller guys jumping up and wait to face him, right? You when he did it with um, and not even a great fighter, you know Willie Monroe. <laughs> um, if you're gonna if you're gonna do that, if you're gonna do it to um, if you're gonna do it to to Mikey Garcia. I mean, to Errol Spence, then you're going to have to do it also to guys like your favorite fighters, like um, Mike Tyson. Yeah, everybody want to talk about Tyson, but he fought, he fought some smaller guys. You got to do it to Muhammad Ali when he faced, um, I'm going to tell you who the guy was. You know what's funny, though? This guy got his own website. 
Muhammad Ali faced the uh, light heavyweight champion of the world. I'm going to tell you his name in a minute. Bob Foster. All right? So you, if y'all want to say, oh, Errol Spence don't get no credit, Muhammad Ali faced Bob Foster. It's a smaller guy. Y'all want to talk about, oh, Floyd Mayweather, he he uh, 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 he beat, he beat he, his, his fight against Juan Manuel Marquez wasn't fair. Okay. Then, then, then if you're going to do that, right, and you're going you're gonna to lash out on Errol Spence as well, Muhammad Ali did it. He faced Bob Foster. And Bob Foster, Bob Foster actually knocked Muhammad Ali down. Yeah. So this is what happened with um, uh, Bob Foster. He jumped up from light heavyweight. Now, now, mind you, he was the undisputed light heavyweight champion of the world. He jumped up from light heavyweight. He was the dominant light heavyweight. Face Muhammad Ali got KO'd, right? Got KO'd. Muhammad Ali stopped him, right? Everybody was like, oh, great fight, you know, because Bob Foster knocked Muhammad Ali down. And actually was beating his ass at a certain point in time. It was much more competitive than Harold Spence versus uh, Mikey Garcia. And you remember Floyd Mayweather versus Juan Manuel Marquez. And it was like, oh, he beat up Marquez and stuff. Marquez didn't get beat up. Marquez didn't get wrecked. He went back down to lightweight, beat up the lightweight champion again, and had the spot, then went back up. So Mikey Garcia is going to be just fine. But to not give Errol Spence the credit for beating Mikey Garcia, a very crafty, very skillful fighter, is just wrong. You got to give him pound for pound. Either he's pound for pound number two or pound for pound number one ahead of everybody else. You have to give him that. You have to give him his credit. You know, I've been saying this all the time. All right. This is not a lose situation for Errol Spence. This is a win win situation. I hear uh, Andrew Ward saying, ah, oh, you know, you didn't expect Errol Spence to beat Mikey Garcia. I, I listened to Andrew Ward. I'm like, dude, you was boxing just recently. You know, as much as people thought that it would be competitive and, and Errol Spence in, in, in eventually, at least offensively, was able to land on, on, on Garcia a little bit more than Garcia was landing on him. Even so, it was, a com it was a competitive matchup. It was a chess game all the time. Don't make it sound. Just because it was a unanimous decision doesn't mean that the fight was like, you know, Mikey was not only outclassed, but he was also like beaten up, which was not the case. Okay. Um, Bob Foster, who had gotten knocked out by Muhammad Ali, goes back down to light heavyweight and dominates. And he dominated until uh, he, he had a draw with Jorge Victor Amun. In fact, he was. Bob Foster was um, Bob Foster had went up to heavyweight before, but Bob Foster was a uh, um, dominant, undefeated light heavyweight champion. All right? So so he was he was big, he was a big deal. And the other thing I wanted to say is people didn't give Floyd credit for beating Ricky Atten. They said, oh, Ricky Adams, no, 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 Ricky Adams really better at super lightweight. No, he went up to welterweight and won a title there, the WBA. No excuses. He beat Ricky Hatton. That's what it happened. It had nothing to do with size. Similarly with Mikey Garcia. Yes, Mikey Garcia just jumped straight. Mikey Garcia jumped straight up from lightweight. He, his last fight was a lightweight. He, he is, though. He was bigger than that. He jumped straight up from lightweight and faced Errol Spence Jr. Right. And you have to give Mikey mad credit for that. And the fact that he has the skills to be able to hang with a guy. It wasn't competitive, but he hang with, him. you know, and that's that's still big. I don't know. A lot of people don't realize that takes skill to do that. And it wasn't he was surviving. He was literally trying to win every round, even the rounds where Errol Spence was looked like he was teeing off on him. You see Mikey counter punch him and then go to the center of the ring and start to back Errol Spence up and try and beat him. He was trying to win every single round. He just was outboxed 
every single round. I never seen that. Mikey was trying to win every single round. I never seen Mikey like he his stamina never went away. He was never really weaker. You know, and that's the thing that impressed me because in other fights I've seen him take a round or two off, you know, in the late rounds and the other guys chasing him down and stuff like that. Not this time. Not this time. And Errol's not really giving Mikey enough credit um, because I guess he has a chip on his shoulder for Mikey saying he was better than him, which I, I don't get it. Mikey's acknowledging that Errol's better than him now. So what's your problem? You know what I'm saying? Um, I think Errol took it a little too personally and she needed to let it go, especially if other people choose Mikey to win the fight. You proved it, man. You proved that you beat him. You are boxing. All right. And I told people that Errol's an excellent boxer. I said all of this in my videos already and that people are underestimating him. And I said that his pivot work is just ridiculous. And there you go. Um, but again, I don't think there's much that separate Errol from Mikey except for range. Errol was able to establish range and keep that range. Um, but not for the entire fight, mind you. Mikey kind of figured out, well, he got desperate too. He figured out he could go on the inside and he, he got to the inside later on in the fight, but it was, by then it was too late. Compared to Errol on being able to be a step ahead of Mikey in that respect. But um, I enjoy watching this fight. Um, I don't think Derek James figured out that Mikey figured out how to get to the inside of Errol. If, 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 if I had to give Mikey advice, it's kind of like with Andre Ward versus Sergio Kovalo. If I had to give Mikey advice, it would be next time you, you have to get on the inside of Errol and work the kitchen sink. And they may meet again. So stay tuned for that. There may be a second fight. So we'll see what happens somewhere down the road because I do think Mikey is that good a boxer. I'd love to see him against all the other welterweights. I'd love to see him against Lomachenko. I think Mikey makes quick work of Lomachenko. Even though Lomachenko would feel that jab would offset Mikey, I think uh, he would learn very quickly that that's not the case. Because I'm pretty sure Mikey, when you go back to the drawing board, I think you're going to realize that you can get past a jab and a sharp one like Errol has. But I think that there's just a just few things you're not doing quite well yet. Um, and you're not, there was a couple of things Mikey could have done in that fight. Like I said, Bob and Weave moved to the inside, keep the upper body moving. When he started doing that, Errol couldn't really pinpoint him, right? And then you, you get on the inside like he, he was doing and work, it, work the inside. I think his D is pretty good. I think Errol sometimes threw certain shots. You can't go shot, shot for shot with Errol on the inside. You gotta set your positioning and work the body shots. Work the body shots, work the head shots. But I think Mikey did very well on the inside with Errol. He's having more success on the inside than he was on the outside. Errol always tried to separate, make distance so he could get his shots off. So I love how Errol head control with the forearm to make the space so that he collapsed that jabbing arm. Um, I think also Mikey could have used a couple more feints to get on the inside. Um, what can I say? What can I say? That's what I think about what Mikey is doing. But I think uh, a Lomachenko fight would be fun. I think Mikey wins that one um, for multiple reasons. He would beat Lomachenko. Um, and what I would love to see after that is if he wants to move up to a higher weight class and go back to welterweight and see if he can get a title there, fine. But I think he would meet Errol Spence back up there because I think Errol Spence is that good. I think he would consolidate all the titles, but then he'll have a lot more experience. But nonetheless, that that's the guy you want to go. You want to go see. You want to go see Errol. I would love to see Mikey versus Errol too. That would be good. Terrence Goff again, very smart fighter, switch hitter and stuff. Not as experienced as Mikey Garcia at the top level. People think he's he's the next apparent one. They a lot of people think he he would beat Errol Spence. I don't think so. Um, but it's possible. It's a 50-50 fight again. Um, Mikey Garcia, when I said Mikey Garcia versus Errol Spence was a 50-50, I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know who was going to win. I said I backed Mikey only because I like him. You know, I want him to make history, but in terms of how the fight turned out, it turned out to be an Errol Spence fight, dominant performance, um, with successes here and there by Mikey Garcia offensively. But it was a dominant performance by Errol Spence. And I'm glad for that. That's good. Kudos to him. Now he's going to be a pay-per-view attraction. Now the money can flow. Hopefully Errol gets the Manny Pacquiao fight. 
I don't see why Manny Pacquiao would turn away from Errol Spence, especially to make that kind of money. Errol's talking about a retirement check. From a, if Errol couldn't even knock out Mikey Garcia and Pacquiao be watching that, he ain't knocking out Pacquiao. He's not knocking out Pacquiao, Errol. Pacquiao's way too smart for that. So you're not going to knock out Manny Pacquiao. And Pacquiao's smaller. No, Pacquiao and Mikey about the same size. The, the interesting thing would be to see, and, and Pacquiao keeps busy and really moves around. So the interesting thing to see would be uh, how Errol would handle Manny Pacquiao, what he could do. Pacquiao ain't as easy as he looks, Errol, so please don't, don't, and he's a veteran. So if you thought Mikey, I'm not saying Pacquiao's better than Mikey, but if you think Pacquiao gonna just go stand there and, 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 and take wallops off the head, you might be getting another thing coming, right? I mean, anyway, he's gonna see for himself. But I hope Pacquiao takes that fight because I think that that's a pay-per-view attraction. Again, I don't, I don't necessarily think Pacquiao will win the fight, um, but it's up to Errol to do his homework on Pacquiao, so that you know he can he can he can get a resounding win. That's the important thing. Not trying to stop these guys. You're gonna learn very quickly, Errol. At this level, you ain't man down on these guys like that. You did it with Kell Brook, and that's probably the only one you're gonna do it with because they know how to maneuver themselves in such a manner that uh you and that you you're gonna you gonna have to stay sharp against Pacquiao. You're gonna have to stay very sharp against Pacquiao. Because Pacquiao will get to you and he will land certain shots and they're gonna hurt. All right. And you're gonna have to have defense for that. So my thing with Errol is because Pacquiao got to Floyd Mayweather. He got to him in the round four. He got to him in round six. He will get to you, Errol. He has hurt every single opponent post Marquez, including Marquez. He's hurt Marquez too. So Pacquiao's a dangerous guy. He's quick. He's swift. Um, you got to keep that. You got to keep that stick on him. You got to keep that stick on him. You know, and hope that you hurt him. And he's tough. What Marquez did, it, it's not easy to replicate. You got the power to do it, but it's not easy to replicate. And Pacquiao got smarter. He's not the same kind of reckless Pacquiao. So I think Errol Spence need to think about that. But I think he can also have. A unanimous decision win over Pacquiao if he does his homework right. But it's all about like how he kept the stick on Mikey. Even though I got to say, Mikey still got past the stick a couple times with the pivot work that Mikey does. Now, Pacquiao doesn't have that kind of pivot work, so you don't have to worry about that, Errol. But, you know, you got to keep that stick on him so that Pacquiao can't get the angles of entry he wants to. He had excessive footwork. Pacquiao has excessive footwork, so that, that's the thing that you got to keep that stick on him. You got to establish that stick early. And um, Errol should be able to get the win over Pacquiao. But Pacquiao will get to Errol. He will hit Errol. That's a guarantee. Pacquiao don't have the greatest defense in the world. He still gets caught coming in. And he got a tough chin and everything. But he doesn't come in with such a, a such a force and recklessness that he can get knocked out. Adrian Bruno learned that the hard way. So, yeah, he still gets tagged with lead rights. So you will be able to land your lead rights on him. But Pacquiao, a lot more tricky and cautious and quick. So if you, for a short guy like that, he always gets on the inside and lands certain punches on a guy. And I saw Mikey Garcia do the same thing to Errol. So Errol can get hit. But I know once once you land one punch on Errol, you're not going to get two or three or four in a row. He's got good defense like that. And I like that. Oh, another thing that I thought was really cool, even though Errol's still not moving his head enough, his pivot work is good. He, he still don't, you need to move that head more, Errol. You're still not moving that head good enough. That's why Mike can keep on catching you with those hooks. Um, but one of the things he does very well is the pivot work. But Errol need to move his head a little bit more. I like how he was, he was changing levels when Pac and when when, when uh, Mikey was changing levels. He would change levels too to kind of nullify what what Mikey was trying to do. But um, gotta still move that head. You still gotta move that head a little bit more. But his defense is, is on point, so I think he could he could handle Manny Pacquiao. Just try to keep that head off the center line a little bit more. I know when you're being aggressive, you know, you can get hit, but you got to keep that head off that center line because it's still there. That's why Mikey was able to land certain shots on you. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, though. Um, so, like I said, popular opinion. So people are going to try and downplay Errol's achievement, which is absolutely wrong. You should never do that. Let me just see what you guys are saying. In the chat section because i know somebody's talking in the chat section i can't see it though 
I can't see the details of the chat section. I'm sorry about that, guys. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, peoples, I haven't gotten enough sleep. That's why my face looks like this. <laughs> but I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. So, yeah, the popularist opinion I noticed in boxing is one that's rather stupid. Canelo versus GGG won. People came down on Adelaide Bird. You remember the idiot that was talking about, oh, Adelaide Bird was the one that um, scored a fight for Floyd Mayweather versus Canelo. I was like, motherfucker, you so stupid. No, it's CJ Ross. You know, it, it's it's people who don't know shit about boxing sometimes talk. Some of them know boxing, but they deliberately miscommunicate and uh, they are. Uh, deliberately misinformed people and then the other people who they know boxing but when it comes to talking about what's happening with uh the fight they're not really telling the truth you know they're lying and i don't know what they was watching but it just don't make no sense to me and that's the thing i never got but again popularist opinion they will try to you know sell errol spence short no he's pound for pound either number one or number two in the world it's just what it is Fuck Lomachenko and Terrence Crawford. They ain't doing shit like Errol did. Right? Errol just fought a multiple weight champion, very skill savvy fighter who would probably beat or be competitive with almost any other welterweight in the division, including Terrence Crawford. He would probably be competitive with them. Right? None of them gonna stop him. Like, you know, Danny Garcia is one of the guys who kind of the most limited of the, the, the welterweights out there. And Danny Garcia, Errol Spence can't stop him. I'm just saying, he not gonna stop Danny Garcia, right? So I'm just saying that a lot of a lot of um, a lot of the guys Errol Spence is gonna face next, and they're welterweights. He's not gonna stop them. There's, no, there's gonna be no man down for those guys. And so, right now he's the number one welterweight in the world. Right now, he's either pound for pound number one or number two. I don't know how long he will sustain that. But I would say this. If Mikey could jump up from lightweight, because that was his last fight. That's why I'm saying that. He could jump up from lightweight, challenge Errol Spence, right? And fall short when it comes to the, the offensive end, but be competitive defensively against Errol Spence. Then you can bet your belly button dollar them welterweights licking their chops. They're like, we full fetch welterweights, man. We want a piece of this guy. All right, they're gonna be licking their chops. I don't know if they calculated properly, but they're gonna be licking their chops against Errol Spence. If you really break down the fight with Mikey Garcia versus Errol Spence, you break it down. I gotta go see a better footage of it though. So that's what I got to say. Popularist opinion is not necessarily the truth. I see some of these channels out there on YouTube saying a lot of fallacious shit when it comes to Spence wrecking Mikey Garcia and destroying his career and all this bullshit, which is not true at all, okay? Ask them how, well, okay, he wrecked, he wrecked Mikey Garcia, okay. Okay, he wrecked him, right? He, he wrecked him. Like Mildred Taylor was wrecked by Chavez, right? Okay, cool. How come he didn't drop him? Oh, Mikey got plenty hard, you know, he took the shots. And that's like, like the same shit I heard with GGG was landing those hard shots on Canelo. Canelo was taking those shots in the first fight. He was like, I don't know how Canelo at chin of Steve. No motherfucker. Nobody can take those kinds of shots. It's that they got defense. They got fucking defense. All right. You got defense. You can, you can do anything in a fight. Defense is what those motherfuckers have. This is not Sugar Ray Leonard versus Roberto Duran where people just taking shots. <laughs> All right? This is different. It's called defense. All right? And Errol Spence knows Mikey has defense. Errol Spence knows. He wanted to shortchange Mikey because he felt that Mikey was talking too much because he was confident and took it personally, which is stupid. Mikey's supposed to be confident. He's supposed to feel he's better than Errol Spence. Otherwise, what the fuck is he going in a fight for? If I don't feel I'm better than you and I can beat you, then what the fuck am I? I'm going to get collect a paycheck? I mean, come on, Errol. He's supposed to think that way. 
at the end of the fight, he was saying something else. But he's supposed to say, I'm faster than him. I'm better than him. I'm a better boxer than him. He's supposed to say that. And still, in some respects, I still agree that he is better than Errol Spence. Because if you were to flip that equation, Errol ain't pushing back no bigger guy that had the skills that he had. He wasn't doing that. Not like how Mikey was doing it. And there's nothing Errol Spence could do about it. And Mikey walked his ass back. Sometimes Mikey was stalking Errol Spence. That's things only Floyd Mayweather was doing in his career. I didn't see a lot of small fighters doing that. So if you're really, if you're really being honest, Errol Spence, Mikey got some stuff in his tank, some stuff that he does that you could learn a thing or two about just in case you have to face bigger opposition someday in your life. All right? So I'm just saying... There's some skill that Mikey, and I love the jab off the off the pivot that he would he would throw at Errol Spence. It fell short, but it was still beautiful to watch. And he was throwing different kinds of jabs too. All right. So I'm just saying, Errol, you could learn a thing or two. You should you and your coach should really go and watch rewatch real to see some of the different strategies that Mikey used in throwing the jab. Yeah, he fell short, but he was throwing the jab different kinds of ways. He was successful in some of them, some of the jabs he threw. He threw a spear jab. He threw, you know, the, a jab that looked like an uppercut. He threw the, the, the shotgun jab. He threw the jab, and he drew it off the pivot. He threw it stationary. He threw it um, off the back foot. It's nice to see. It's nice to see this kind of shit, you know. Got skills. The boy got skills, but it's just that he fell short with most of his punches because Errol Spence established his jab, and, you know, it was harder to get around it. So um, I'm not saying Errol Spence didn't do some good work with his jab either. He did different kinds of jabs as well, if you were paying attention. It wasn't just the straight, you know, the, the power jab. He was, he was, and most importantly, he wasn't, he wasn't loading up on every single shot, right? And you know, Errol, you would have gotten more success on Mikey Garcia if you didn't try to rip, you try to rip a certain, you were trying to rip certain shots, man. And if you just relax a little bit, and just delay that timing a little bit more. You'd have caught him because he shell up based on the speed, the speed at which he was hooking. And since he was hooking at one kind of speed, he was able to pick you off. So you don't, don't, that's why I see these subtle things, you know, these subtle things that uh, in boxing you have to know. You know what I'm saying? You have to know how to do these subtle things. You know, I have, Credit to Mikey on picking off Spence, but I could see how it was easier for Mikey to pick off Spence because Spence sometimes throw with full force. And I told you, don't throw. For, and you got counter punched because of that arrow, Spence. But you keep on throwing everything with the same sort of mustard sometimes. Vary it. Change it. These are nuances. You got to learn this shit. There's a lot you could have learned off of Mikey Garcia facing him if you're being honest and you're truly being humble. You got to learn a couple things off of the guy. All right? Who did not have reach or height advantage. He was the same weight with you. And it's remarkable he jumped up, you know, he jumped up in weight and he was able to handle you. You shouldn't be thinking about all of that. But you probably know he was going to do that. But you know you couldn't get a man. He, he knows. He knows he's getting a man there. But you learn a lot by facing that guy because he's got so much experience. Like you said, he was a veteran. He knew what to do. And um, defense is everything. So, you know, Errol Spence looked remarkable with his defense. It's still work you can do on the defense, though. You know, one of the things is changing head slot positions. You've got to move your fucking head, man. If you go up in weight class and you start going up in higher weight, you're not going to get away with that. You know, you're not going to get away with that shit. So you've got to move your head, Errol Spence. Still keeping that head too much along the center line. That's what Mikey, he caught you with counter punching, especially when you throw in shit. You throwing shit right in front of Mikey, and he just watching, watching, set the bait, 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 counter punch. Right? He peeping. He's still watching you through his guard. So you gotta remember that, and he counter punch your ass. You know what I'm saying? You know. So that's where you have to. You can't. Danny Jacobs does that same shit. He stand right in front of the guy. You used to come off the jab off an angle. What happened with that? Because he turned and faced you, he cut off the angle. So that means you stopped doing that. You got to come off an angle, Ninja. And you can be careful. Otherwise, incoming fire will keep on hitting you. You cannot be doing that at higher weight classes. If you want to be like Floyd Mayweather, you got to make sure you don't do that shit. 
You know what I mean? I mean, and you can even pop the jab from down low because he was doing it, looking good. You know, so even if you get caught, you can go, you, you dip down to the side, and then from there now, you can stay low, you're picking him off, and then you can jab high. Catch him back, bop, bop his head back a bit. So all of those little tricks you can do. Um, well, I saw you I saw you changing levels and, and jabbing low, so that was good. I like how you faint high, go low, like, like you know, faint high, go low. Sometimes you faint high, faint high again, go low. Love that. Beautiful faint. Um, you know, um, I even like the hook off the jab that you did once. I, I saw Mikey do the same thing. He hooked off his jab, but he fell short again um, with a punch. I think the thing with Mikey was he was falling short with his punches. You were not falling short with yours. I think that's the difference, really, in the fight. And once Mikey figured out, oh, shit, I got to close the distance. I had to end fight this guy. I think that's where everything started to change. But um, it got more competitive then because he won the 10th, he won the 11th, he won the 12th. You know, it got more competitive. But he, he figured it out too late in the fight. Figured it out too late in the fight. And it makes sense because you are strong on the inside. So he wouldn't think that he wouldn't think that he could win a battle with you on the inside. So obviously he was testing the waters. He said, oh, man, I got to get to this guy somehow. And then he figures out, oh, I got to end fight him. And you know this shit. You know this is what was going on. Like, he, he's no way he could have fought you on the outside. You're just too good with the jab, keeping him at bay. I love the forearm stuff that you was doing. You brace him and you just extend the jab and you can easily, you know, I love that. That shit was good. Notice I break down fights, people. And um, I'll be watching everything the box will be doing, you know, so that people can see that. When you understand what the fuck is going on in the ring, it's a different story. That's so why I turned the sound off because I couldn't take the commentary. The commentators were like fucking up the whole thing. They couldn't see the contest between the two fighters. I don't know what the fuck they saw, but I saw something different. You know what I'm saying? So I turned, I just turned the commentary off because it really annoys me when people don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Not even a boxer. Because the guy who was talking wasn't even a boxer. Um, you know. It's just annoying. But it's nice to see Errol Spence take that win. Looking forward to him facing Manny Pacquiao. I think that's the next organically uh, set up fight. I don't see why Pacquiao won't take it. It doesn't matter what Errol Spence says about early retirement. I suggest Manny Pacquiao take that fight. He should have seen that um, Mikey Garcia stayed up. That means Errol Spence can, couldn't knock him out. Errol Spence going to have to go back to the drawing board in terms of trying to man down people. Just like Keith Thurman had to go back to the drawing board, it happens, and I'll tell him, I'll tell Errol Spence why. These these uh these these top tier opponents, these top tier um, champions and, and top tier uh, boxers, they know how to ride punches, they know how to roll punches, they know how to block punches. There's a way to block punches where you take the steam off the punch as well. So if you look at Canelo Alvarez, he got the roving guard. A roving guard is moving. So if I hit here, the guard will bounce off. But I'm still protected by it. You know, you watch Mikey Garcia. He was trying to really rip some punches on Mikey. You see his guard fly this way. But he did that to take some of the steam off the fucking punch. So that if he just stayed firm like this, like, like Lamar Peterson did, then he would hurt his hands eventually because you punch his hands and you hurt the hands. But if you ride the punch, you let the, the, the fluidity of the, the punches move your hands, move your arms and shit. And you keep your hands relaxed, you can actually weather that storm and then come back with something. So that's that's the thing that you see, there's all these little subtle shit that you have to know in boxing. You can't just be soon, you have to be relaxed, fluid, composed. You know, you're taking punishment, so you might as well um make sure you, you take punishment in the areas that can withstand it, you know. Um, so that's why I say Mikey's not Lamont Peterson, he sure as hell is not Chris Algeri, right? He was a top tier guy. You got to give Aaron Spence the credit for that because Mikey's a hell of a fighter. We'll see. The next fight, we'll see that Mikey's a hell of a fighter. Then you guys going to realize, oh, shit, Aaron Spence did beat a top-tier guy, a serious dude, right? So that's all I got to say for now. Uh, and um, obviously what I just talked to you guys was the truth because two two reasons. One, Aaron Spence said 
what he said. Two, Robert Garcia said what he said. And Mikey Garcia said what he said. Mikey Garcia himself talked about, you know, his defense and stuff and how he, he was, you know, defensively, he was all right. And and I hope the younger fighters listen. It's not about flashiness. It's not about pretending to have defense. You got to have fucking defense because the one thing you must be able to do in that ring is protect yourself at all times, at all times, right? You must not let your opponent land more than one shot on you at a given time. Let him flurry away. But if you got good defense, he ain't supposed to hit you, right? So there's a lot of things. Um, there's a lot of things in boxing that people don't tell, and I'll just talk it out. I'm not a boxer. This is gonna sound insulting, but I know very little about boxing. So just imagine some of you assholes out there. You don't know shit about boxing for sure. I know very little about boxing. Okay, very little. But that doesn't mean that. I don't see what's happening in the ring as as somebody who's supposed to understand the sport of boxing, at least as a viewer, to be able to appreciate what I'm seeing. I got enough knowledge in my head to at least understand what's going on in the boxing ring a little bit. I'm sure what the boxers see is different to what I see because they up close and personal so they can see all the feints and everything that's going on that I can't see. But in terms of boxing and how the fight's going, what the boxers trying to do with each other, I, I I pretty much can get that idea and understand how intriguing the fight is because a lot of people are ignorant of these things. And sometimes some of the great professionals talk ignorantly about these things. Maybe it's where they are, maybe where they're seated, they see a different kind of fight. Maybe it's that and I, I seeing it on television or in a, a better panoramic view from a distance, see it differently. But at the end of the day, I'm pretty sure what I saw was what I saw was the truth. Okay. So when I tell people certain things, you know, it's coming from a love for boxing. It's not coming from, you see how fair I was with Errol Spence and Mikey Garcia, right? And I'd still believe that Mikey Garcia had a shot to win this fight, but clearly it was not a 50-50 fight. But at the time, I thought it was. Um, so I was wrong there. You know, and if you if you really follow my channel, you really appreciate boxing and stuff. Let me see what you guys are saying in the comment section. Because I'm pretty sure somebody said something. Okay, nobody said nothing. Okay, cool. But if you if you, if you follow my channel long enough, you'll realize I usually come from a place of expressing certain things based on what I've seen and facts that people say and stuff like that. And, and why I'm taking so much time to talk about popular opinion is because once again I'm seeing the shit again. You know, nobody's commenting on the fact that Katie Taylor headbutted Rose Valente, and that's why the fight stopped. But yet they get a technical decision for it. Nobody's gonna, because everybody's thinking, oh, Rose Valente by default was going to lose that fight. Fuck no. You don't know that till the fight's over. And Gabe Rosado proved that. So all I'm saying is that was a fucking bad referee decision. If you wanted to stop the fight because of the accident hand, but that was bad, and then go to the scorecards, that's different. The, but, but Bruce Valenti was not TKO'd. Stop the bullshit. Stop the bullshit. And again, it's about boxing. It's not about no fucking popularist opinion. I don't give a fuck about that. I, I care about truth. So if you're going to do, if you're going to say something, say it right, man. And that's the thing that gets me. If I'm wrong about something, don't I say I was wrong? I don't have a problem. I, I'm, I'm more, more important to me is the truth than it is about whether I'm right or wrong about something. Everybody gets something wrong. I remember Tyson Fury versus um, Vladimir Klitschko. I thought Klitschko was going to win. I couldn't see how Tyson Fury would win. All right, I was dead wrong about that. You know, Vladimir Klitschko is a hell of a boxer. He still is to this day a hell of a boxer. All right? I don't take nothing away from Anthony Joshua either. A lot of people out here be saying, you know, Klitschko is old. He was over two days. Then why are you taking the fight then? Why did he take the fight to fight Anthony Joshua? Because he wanted to get back to the throne. All right? So I, I don't like the stupid excuses. He dropped Anthony Joshua for crying out loud. That was Vladimir Klitschko. Klitschko was Klitschko. Anthony Joshua won that fight. Call him an uppercut. And you have to give credit where credit is due. A lot of times what we do is we're so partisan and we don't like this person or we don't like that fighter 
that we skew the truth to fit our narrative. We skew it, right? Ask Baloney, all right? Tevin Farmer, outbox Carol O'Connor. Carol O'Connor landed some shots on, on Tevin Farmer, but Tevin Farmer was the stronger guy of the two, pushing O'Connor into the corner at times. O'Connor was game. He didn't get hurt that much. In fact, I think he got buzzed in 11 too. But he knew what to do. So at the end of the day, he wasn't hurt that much in the fight either, right? And my point being, kudos to him, all right? The only thing that happened was he got busted out from an accidental headbutt. Shit happens. Now, don't make no excuses saying, oh, I threw the game plan out the window and I had to, no, don't do that. You got a head cut, a headbutt, and you fought through it. And you made it to the finish line, but it was a unanimous decision win for Tevin Farter. Hard rounds for Tevin Farter, though. But unanimous decision. Just be real about the thing. You know what I'm saying? A lot of fighters want to make excuses. I like that Mikey Garcia made no excuses whatsoever. He went in there. He was like, the dude's the better man. I tried to, I tried to have a game plan. He had an answer for everything I had. That's the way you do it. He didn't do like Manny Pacquiao and say, I think I won the fight. <laughs> like an asshole. You know what I mean? No. He knew he lost. All right? He knew he lost. He ain't happy that he lost, but he knows he lost. He knows that Errol Spence was the better fighter in there. He acknowledged that. He said he is the truth. And he was right. That's how you do it. You lose a fight, you lose a fight. All right? And that's it. That's the real, that's the mark of a true champion. And he's going to be champion again. He's going to be, um, he's going to make his fifth weight class. He's going to be champion at fifth, in his fifth weight class. I don't know how exactly he's going to face, who he's going to face, and what's a way to make that happen. But he's going to be champion again. He's going to get that fifth weight class somehow, some way. I believe. I don't know. I may be wrong. But my point anyway is that I think that this was this was what boxing is about sometimes. And in boxing, you got people who go with the crowd and will say something. And you have other people who see the fight and they know, okay, this is what really happened. All right. Canelo versus GGG was the most biased assed, the biased assed thing that I ever heard where people were saying GGG won. Up to this day, I hear fucking assholes saying, oh, GGG won the first fight. You know? And I, you know who you know who kind of breaks it usually correctly, in my opinion? King Troy. That dude, that dude spells it out nicely. He spells it out nicely. Say Canelo beat GGG. And clearly he did. He beat him. And he beat him by a wide match margin. Nine to three. Eight to four. He beat him. All right. And in doing so, GGG's face got punishment. Canelo beat the shit out of GGG. Second fight, he backed his ass up and beat the shit out of him. Yeah, you all will say, well, why didn't GGG fall to the ground then? Because GGG could take a fucking punch. But literally, GGG's face was being hit all the time in his body. Canelo was busting up the body and busting up the face. He couldn't knock him out. But it was, it was, it was really, I mean, Canelo was ripping it. And GGG's bigger than Canelo was supposed to be. At least he was the correct middleweight. You see what I'm saying? So when a guy's pursuing you and you hit him a certain shot and he backs off of you, yeah, you heard. All right, guys. So I hope you guys enjoy enjoyed this video. Leave your comments in the comment section if you want to. Your boy is gone. Later.